more now with Rod Dreyer, author of the new book, Live Not By Lies, a manual for Christian dissidents. Rod, you mentioned how Christians can have liberal allies in this struggle. Now, conservative Christians on some occasions have actually been in agreement with the liberal ACLU on some of these issues like, say, privacy, mm -hmm. so forth. So what did you learn about the conservative liberal alliance in some of the interviews you did for the book? Yeah, this was fascinating to me. When, when I was in Prague talking to uh, a family that had gone through uh, communism and the, the father is now dead, but he spent four years as a political prisoner for his Christian faith. They told me that in Prague and the Czech Republic in those days, there weren't enough Christians to matter. So Christians who were standing up to the communist government had to make alliances with uh, liberals and unbelievers. And they said these could be really important because, you know, they wanted everybody to be Christian, this family. But they said that, you know, there were lots of decent people who didn't share their faith, but who did share their commitment to freedom. In our situation, we need to make alliances with people like this. I'm thinking about people like Jordan Peterson, people like uh, Brett Weinstein and his wife Heather Hying, leftist atheists who are driven out of Evergreen University, but they are on the right side. And uh, they're not Christians, but they share our commitment to religious liberty and freedom of speech. It's important that we connect with these people. Yeah, that was told in, uh, at PragerU. I was a teen in high school when Alexander Zolchanitsyn uh, wrote the book Gulag Archipelago. It was released in English uh, in the mid-70s. And I was horrified by that when I read it. But I know, as many others, I was attracted to his thoughts about living in truth, not living by mm -hmm. lies. Now, we're living in a time now when we see social media fact-checking, Pinocchio's being awarded, Biden called Trump a liar, political lying is commonplace. And I know uh, Joseph Goebbels said if you, you tell a big lie or a lie big enough and keep repeating it, people eventually will believe it. In Orwell's mm -hmm. 1984, he called it doublespeak. So, to what extent is that happening in America today, and what effect is that having on our society? Well, one of the things Hannah Arendt said was a precursor for totalitarianism is people giving up a belief in truth, that truth can is out there, it's independent, and can be known. Rather, they give themselves over to wanting to believe whatever their ideology tells them is true. We're seeing this happen all the time. Uh, for example, the New York Times in its 1619 project, which uh, tries to reframe, that's their word, reframe the history of America to say it was all about slavery. We were founded as a slaveholding republic. This is simply not true. There have been leftist historians who said this is not true. Nobody's denying slavery, but they're saying that our country was not founded that way. But if people believe this lie from the New York Times, they will come to hate America because America will have been founded in sin, you know, in a, in a structure of sin and slavery. So this is a small thing, but it's actually not a small thing because this idea has spread to 5,000 schools. Oprah Winfrey and Lionsgate Studios have made a deal with the founder of the 1619 Project to make films about this. This is how people who don't have a particular uh, concern about truth, ordinary people, They'll come to believe this is, as the gospel. Uh, Alexander Solzhenitsyn wrote this famous essay called Live Not By Lies. That's where I take the title of my book, in which on the eve of his expulsion from the Soviet Union in 1974, he told his followers, he said, look, we may not have the power to stand up to this totalitarian regime, but the one thing that we can do is refuse to say that something is true that we know is not true. Now, in our country, we have a situation where uh, we are being commanded by the system that's emerging to say things like a biological male is a woman if, if he claims he's a woman. Little things like that matter greatly because if we get into the situation where we are willing as individual believers to say, yes, it's true, just because we don't want trouble, then we're done for. Alexander Solzhenitsyn said that we are no better than a herd of cattle if we do that. So I've written this book to try to wake Christians up to the nature of the threat and to inspire them using the stories of, and testimonies of Christians from Eastern Europe and the Soviet Union to give us the courage we need to endure. And finally, we do have an election coming up. No kidding, right? You seem to right. believe the country's move toward socialism or totalitarianism is already in place. It really does not matter if Trump is elected or Biden's elected. Now, that's not very encouraging for Americans who love our way of life, the Constitution, especially the First and Second Amendments, free speech, religion, 
gun possession. Mm -hmm. How do we reverse this course? What can we do, Rod? I really don't think it can be reversed at this point. I'm sorry to say, I think we're living through the birth pangs of a cultural revolution. And the best thing Christians can do now is build networks within our churches and among churches to endure. I'm not saying that politics are unimportant. They are. I believe that the federal judiciary is going to be the last line of defense over the next two or three decades uh, for believing Christians. So it's important to vote. But we can't think that politics alone are going to solve it. I mean, if, if President Trump were a philosopher king, he couldn't stop a lot of this stuff. This sort of thing is marching through all the institutions. It's marching through churches. It's marching through universities, seminaries, corporations. And we Christians have got to be prepared for it. That's why I wrote the book. A lot to pray about, right? Absolutely. Yeah. But let's have hope here, because so many of the people I talked to, the dissidents, did not imagine that in their lifetime communism would fall. They resisted it and were willing to suffer for it because it was the right thing to do, and it was the right thing to do to be faithful to Jesus Christ. We have to have that same attitude, hope for the best, but we also have to remember ours is a religion of martyrdom. Those who, who suffered and even died for the faith, they received a crown of glory. That may well be our calling, and we need to accept it as believers. There's a lot of hope out there. I was standing in Berlin when the wall came down and never thought I'd see that in my lifetime. It happened. God did it. Well, the book Absolutely. is Live Not By Lies, a manual for Christian dissidents. Rod Dreher, thank you for sharing your thought-provoking insights today. God bless you. God bless you too. Thank you.